Hi everybody, Eve Everett here, and this time around we're going to talk about what's sold on eBay, uh, from everyday easy to find items, uh, to items that sometimes you can find at yard sales or flea markets that you can flip for cash. But first, a few minor points of interest. Uh, first one being getting this whole Jekyll and Hyde thing with some customers lately. Like first they'll be very sweet, and then they just completely excessively go above and beyond the call freaking out. Uh, I accidentally, and by the way, I'm not excusing what happened here by any you know stretch of the imagination. I accidentally sent somebody a lie. It was a scarf and a hat, and I sent them the wrong hat by accident. And while I was out attending an event, they apparently left negative feedback, uh, and then they thought about it and emailed me and asked for a feedback revision saying that they went kind of crazy and they felt bad. Um, so I ultimately gave them uh, a full refund. Uh, they revised the feedback, and I'm still going to send them the right hat. And we both kind of feel bad because she wouldn't have done that if I hadn't sent her the wrong thing. And she's upset that she didn't talk to me about it first and realized that she was wrong about me. And anyway, it just got resolved. But it was just one of those mini dramas, you know what I mean? Uh, I got another person who wanted me to email them t twice uh, before I mailed a package so that they could be at this location, I guess. I don't know exactly why. Uh, I emailed them as I entered the tracking, thinking that they get my email and an eBay would send them the tracking number or something. I guess I was wrong about that, but they were not happy. Uh, we worked that out, and uh, that was fine. But they emailed me back, cursing, freaking out, and I'm like, whoa. And I think they realized that they kind of, you know, freaked out a little bit too much, but... Anyway, it's okay. We worked it out. Just be aware that you might get some Jekyll and Hyde's, and I'm not excusing anything that I may have done uh, to cause it. Uh, but I guess with the election cycle, we all have to uh, walk on eggshells, I guess. That's just my opinion. I, I think that buyer, some buyers are much more stressed out than they normally would be, so just, just give them a break. And a uh, question that I have. Is anybody interested in me doing like a live haul video? And if so, what notification of that would be most helpful to you? All right, and to start things off, I got this uh, Boyd's Bear uh, Maze McPigsley uh, at a weigh and go. And, you know, I picked her up because I thought she was cute. I was thinking that I would lot her up with some everythings. I price checked her and I found that she uh, sells pretty well. So I posted her in the middle of June, and she sold by the second week of July for $27.99. And as you can see, she has her, next to her neck there, uh, she has her tag attached, which for uh, Boyd's items, I think that's important. Here's another Kathy Van Zeeland item. I mentioned them a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a Kathy Van Zeeland wallet organizer. And I sold this for, this is faux leather, by the way. I sold this for $25, and I listed this in February. I sold it at the beginning of July. So we're talking roughly, uh, what, like almost five months. So I had that for a little while, but, you know, it's a pretty small item. Easy to find, easy to list, and 25 bucks. that's not bad. Here's another uh, two small tote bags that I found at the Weigh and Go. Uh, one of them is a Tom's. Uh, Wizard of Oz tote bag, uh, newer tags. I also threw in a Bowden tote. It's one of those almost like recyclables. So together they didn't weigh very much at all. And I sold these for uh, $18. I listed for $24.99, sold them for $18 on best offer. And um, I must have been a little needy that week because I listed out on May 9th and it sold by May 14th. So Anyway, there you have it. 18 bucks shipped out to White Plains, New York. Here's another one I got at the uh, Way and Go uh, Goodwill Outlet. I call them Way and Goes. There's all kinds of different names for them, I guess. Anyway, uh, this is one of those uh, sequin flyaway cardigan jobs. And I got this at the Way and Go. It did have a few flaws to it. Uh, I guess people wore these a lot in the uh, late 50s to 60s. I find that they uh, do pretty well when I come across them. So I generally pick them up unless they're very damaged. So uh, this one had a few uh, missing sequins. And when I say fly away, I just simply mean it doesn't have uh, any closures on it. But it does have a nice glam touch to it. And I sold this for 
uh, $41 and it was shipped to the UK. When I saw this shirt at the thrift shop, I thought it was so cool. It's a, uh, on the back of the shirt, it says happy bowler and it has a happy bowling ball uh, hitting a strike. And on the front, it's got another bowling ball. And I just thought it was cool, cool coloring and a decent job on it. And I sold it for $15 and it sat a little longer than I thought it would. It took me about eight months to move that one. Uh, but I sold it for $15 and it shipped to Iowa. Uh, I got this at a uh, church uh, thrift shop. It's one of those uh, places that's open once a month for three hours. Uh, I'd go there every so often. Uh, this time around I had found a, a museum toy works pattern and it's of a, uh, a tabby and it's one of those things where you stuff it and it makes like a pillow or doorstop type of item. In any event, I sold that for $22 and I sold that in nine days, shipped that to Pennsylvania. Here we have a uh, vintage uh, 1970s purple and pink floral Hawaiian fabric. It ran about three and a half yards. Had a bark cloth feel to it, but it was actually simulated. The fabric was a lot thinner when you turned it over and looked at the, uh, the weft. Uh, it wasn't bark cloth, but it was a darn good simulation of it. And I sold this for $29, and it took me about 10 days to sell that, and it got shipped right back to Hawaii, where it came from. Uh, it said on the salvage that it was made in Hawaii, so that explains that. Here we have an Anne Klein and Vera uh, collaboration scarf. Uh, this is silk. It was about uh, 31 by 30 inches, uh, signed at the bottom. Uh, probably designed in the mid-80s. Very beautiful design, and I sold that in a uh, little under two months for $29. Uh, here we have an authentic pair of Gucci uh, glasses, and naturally uh, these would be bought for the frames, or at least I think so. Uh, there were prescription uh, glass in them, and I did explain that that would have to be uh, taken out unless by coincidence you have the same prescription. And it did sit around for a while, uh, and I sold that in about uh, six and a half months for $28. This is a Nintendo Game Boy Advanced a carrying case, and it was in pretty good shape. And I figured that even though the uh, Nintendo that it was meant for came out several years ago, uh, it was bound to be something needed by somebody, and it was did have the uh, Game Boy branding on it. And I sold this for, I listed it at 22 I sold it for $15, and it took me a little under five months to sell that. Uh, this is another Way & Go find. I have pretty good luck with uh, Candemar designs, and if I find that they will sell for like, you know, 15 bucks and up, I'll pick them up, especially if they're new in the package. Uh, this one was in its original package. It's a Susan Rios design called Best Times. It's a teddy bear needlepoint, and teddy bears resonate very well with some people. So I sold this for $22.99, and uh, this probably took me a little longer than I would have liked, but it did sell for, like I said, $22.99. Uh, I put that up in November, and it finally sold in the middle of June. Uh, here is the first of a series of lots of mood rings that I sold. I went to an auction where the uh, person who owned this, um, it's like an artisan art shop, and I also had uh, jewelry, uh, went out of business years ago. So I picked up this and probably about 45 other mood rings with the original cards that went with them. And, you know, I kind of looked around at the results of what was selling on eBay and for some reason came up with the idea to list three of the same ring together with the card. So in any event, I spent $27 on those and I picked up like I said I think it was like 40 or 50 of them uh, in a lot and I sold these in lots of two or three for $22 a lot so here we have three heart mood rings and they're simple adjustable metal rings and uh, the original cards were included and like I said I lotted these up for 22 bucks and they all sold and here's another variation of, of that group that I bought. Uh, instead of hearts, we have ovals here. And uh, these are more rounded. And in the back there, you'll see the Your Emotional Ring <laughs> card. And I sold many, many lots of these. 
I sold them all at around $22 to $24 a piece, and I sold completely out of them uh, about two months ago. So sometimes mood rings can really work out. I don't usually pick up Bogari Studio, but this was a uh, size 4X for men, 100% silk, and I uh, sold this in under two months, shipped it to Utah for 25 bucks. This is a vintage Barbizon black lace uh, nylon nightgown, uh, new with tags. I sold this for $34.99, and it sold in four days. Uh, this is a one of those 1980s to early 90s caboodles makeup boxes, and I just love them. I had one of my own uh, back in the day. I've sold about four or five of these over the year. They're somewhat easy to find at the weigh and goes. Sometimes you have to clean them up a little bit. Uh, this one, for some reason, someone took the uh, the hinge, that silver uh, hinge there that uh, opens and closes it, and they made like a silver glittery flower looking thing. And, you know, I hemmed and hauled, but overall it was in really good condition aside from somebody altering that. And I sold this for $27.99. And uh, it's sold in about uh, two and a half months, shipped that to Oregon. And that's the other thing. I shipped it to Oregon from the East Coast. And I'm really going to have to figure out if I'm going to sell these in the future. I'm really going to have to think about that because my partner was not happy. It ended up costing us like uh, something like 12 or $13 because it's just one of those awkward sizes. I don't know. Um, so I guess uh, the problem is with these is if you uh, put the prices too high on them, uh, they won't sell or they'll sit forever. And there only seems to be a fairly uh, narrow price range between 15 and maybe $35 that they're actually going to move uh, if you sell them. So that's my opinion anyway. Anyway, uh, we did sell it, but I, I think if I see them in the future, I'm going to have to give it a lot more thought as to whether or not it's uh, worth our time to pick these up and sell them because my partner has a fit every single time we sell one of these and he has to uh, ship it. So, alrighty then. This is a Rachel Ray insulated cargo lunch tote bag. And I don't usually uh, pick these lunch bags up. Uh, this one was very clean and I sold it for $22.55. Uh, it did take me about seven months to sell that. Uh, this is about uh, one and a half yards of a 100% cashmere beautiful blue plaid fabric. I uh, sold this for $39.99. All right, so the next few you're going to see are from an auction I attended of specialty textiles. And uh, here we have some antique selling notions, uh, needle cases. It's an eight piece lot. And I sold this for $37.55 and sold it in four days. And Sometimes, if you're at the weigh and go, you'll see these uh, like the uh, cardboard cases, uh, and sometimes even the fabric ones kind of floating around, uh, especially if they're from the 1920s through the 40s. Uh, there is interest in them, whether it's the advertising or the design. So, you might want to pick them up and then hold on to them and lock them up. Uh, they're very easy to ship, and I sold, like I said, I sold these in about um, four days for $37.55, so not bad. And this is from the same uh, specialized antique textile and fabric auction that I attended. This is a Victorian antique metal sewing pin cushion. It actually rotates around. Uh, not a huge fan of it. Maybe uh, steampunk people might want this for some reason, but I do know that they sell. And I sold this for $34.99. It took me about three and a half months to move this one. And here we have uh, three antique and vintage satin embroidered pin cushions. Uh, I lotted them up in a lot of three. And I sold these for 40 bucks. And uh, that took me about three weeks to move. Uh, these are two additional remnants from that uh, vestment lot, the religious fabrics that I got at the uh, specialized auction I was telling you about. And uh, these were gold, had like this uh, gold embroidered trim. And sometimes people are looking uh, to just uh, remove the uh, trim, especially if it has metal threads in it. Uh, this lot, this fabric was uh, stained and shattered, uh, but the trim was in pretty good condition, and I sold the two of these for $45.
I found these at a thrift shop. They're Lucky Brand. Uh, Riley is the name of the design. Has suspenders, uh, size 2. I sold these for $36 and took me a little under three months to move and they got uh, shipped to Australia with additional shipping. And here's something else you can find fairly often, even at Way and Goes. Uh, these are vi two vintage sailor hats uh, that were uh, probably post World War II. And I sold these for $39, and it took me under three months to sell those, shipped to Wisconsin. And here we have a bag by a group called Dixie Bags, and this is a hummingbird design tapestry. I uh, sold this for $26.55, and it took me under a month to sell it, shipped to Maryland. This is a reproduction, uh, but still vintage, uh, floral green calico quilted sunbonnet. And sunbonnets are often worn for whether it's uh, like a reproduction for like a recreation of a historic event or uh, some people still wear these uh, while they're working outside. Uh, they are functional and kind of neat to have. Anyway, I do pick them up when I see them because they move. I sold this for 20 bucks and I sold this in under three months. Uh, one day I was at the Weigh and Go, and the Weigh and Go put out probably about 20 pounds of nothing but these uh, 1930s through uh, 19, late 1950s uh, booklets on crocheting doilies, bedspreads, tablecloths, and all that stuff. And uh, pretty much everybody ignored them, so I was able to get every single one of them, and then I allotted them up. And I sold, this is a lot of 25. Uh, they're all basically uh, crochet doily patterns and instructions and things like that. Uh, I sold 25 of these for $39.99. And it did take me a little while to move them, but I thought the price was more than fair for that amount. And it took me about uh, seven months to sell those. And I shipped these uh, to Utah. And here is a lot of uh, 25 more. Uh, but this is for uh, tablecloth and bedspread patterns, and I sold these for $37.99 and took me about the same amount of time uh, to sell these as the last slot. took me uh, about uh, six and a half months. Here we have a pair of Michael Kors black leather peep toe heels. Uh, these were a size eight and a half, and I sold these for uh, $25 on best offer. And finally, to uh, wrap this up, I have a pair of Clark's Wallabies, and I sold these for $59.99, and uh, there you have it. And Clark's Chuckas and Wallabies, and there's uh, like a brand called Desert Shoes, or sub-brand, I guess you would call it, of Clark's. Uh, some of them can do quite well, so you might want to look those up, because you can find them from time to time in thrift shops. Uh, I did very well with these, so... Not bad, although for some reason, other Clarks, like Clark Indigos, things like that, they take longer, much longer to sell. So anyway, all right, everybody, uh, have a great time out there. Uh, we're getting into the home stretch before the holidays, and uh, you know, keep your eyes looking for things to sell, keep your hands busy, keep yourselves out of trouble, and good hunting. <laughs>